In this video, I'm going to be painting two versions of the same miniature much faster than I normally do. First, I'll be painting in my traditional method, just trying to go more quickly. And then I'll try to paint it even faster using Army Painter's new speed paint. Hi everyone, my name is Nate and you are watching WASD20. This video is sponsored by Titan Forge, who is the maker of this awesome orc miniature I'm going to be painting in the video. We'll hear more about them in a little bit. So for the last couple of years, I've really been trying to increase the speed at which I can paint, and I've mostly been failing. So in this video, I really want to push myself to paint faster in my traditional method, and then also see if Army Painter Speed Paint can really help me take care of some of the armies of unpainted resin and plastic I've got staring at me from various parts of my office here. So the goal is to first paint in my traditional method using layering and opaque paint like this Vallejo and Army Painter paint in 90 minutes. And then we're gonna try out this new speed paint and see if I can paint the same miniature in only 30 minutes. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do it, but I'm gonna try. All right, first the traditional layering method. Let's get to it. So to start with on this one, I primed with Vallejo Black Surface Primer and then I actually did a Zenithal highlight with the Army Painter Rattle Can Primer that I just bought because it's what's recommended for speed paint. This is not the speed paint model, but decided why not give it a little Zenithal highlight. It really just helps me see more of the detail and helps me anticipate where my highlights should go. For the base coat on the skin, I used Vallejo Model Color Intermediate Green, and then I did a second coat mixing in a little bit of lime green to brighten it up. And then uh, slowly, I added more lime green in and did another two or three levels of highlights. You'll see me go back and do some higher highlights later in the video, but I would say overall, the skin probably took me about 25 minutes. Now, I'm not gonna talk about every surface and every color I used because I think you're mainly here for the speed paint, which we'll get to in a couple minutes but I will talk about my general method for trying to paint more quickly with this miniature than I normally do. And I would love to hear your thoughts too on how you paint more quickly. The basic idea for me was that I'm not going to do multiple coats with highlights building up on every surface. I do that on a lot of my miniatures. I'll even you know, add highlights on the little coin pouch and little straps and things like that. But on this miniature, I really wanted to focus my highlights only on the largest surfaces, mainly the skin tone, the green skin tone, and the waist cloth, which I decided to go with kind of a classic red. I, I sort of had like a Warcraft 2 orc in mind, which is one of my favorite games from my childhood, the old strategy game, not, not World of Warcraft. Now, I guess you could say the huge cleavers are also uh, one of the larger surfaces. And yeah, I, I didn't highlight those. But don't worry, we are going to do something to them to make them look a little more interesting than they do right now. So here you can see me going in and building up more of those red and green highlights that I mentioned before, just trying to elevate them a little more and make them pop. And now, you guessed it, the major shortcut, magic in a bottle. I am dousing most of the surfaces of this miniature in a wash. I'm using Army Painter's Quick Shade Strong Tone to cover pretty much everything except for the green skin tone. And uh, yeah, it's just a really quick way to bring some more definition and make the details pop. And for a big bad monster like this orc, to just kind of dirty them up a bit, which is always a good look, especially on that metal. And by the way, most of the metal is Vallejo Game Color Chainmail Silver. Lastly, I did paint the base. I just kind of splashed some orange and brown paints on there and then gave it a wash as well. And then I finished by painting the rim of the base black. I highly recommend finishing your base and painting that rim a nice crisp color whenever you're done with your miniature. No matter how fast you painted the rest of the miniature, it will look more like a finished product when you finish your base. And there it is, the finished product, all told with the base and everything. It was about a 90 minute paint job, which I would say is not speed painting, but it is a very quick paint job for me. I usually spend a lot more time, and in this one I was actually trying to paint quickly. 
Anyway, I would love to hear your thoughts, maybe some corners that could be cut or some additional things that I could do to just elevate it a little bit more. Now, before we get to the next paint job, if you're interested in picking up these models from Titan Forge, they are in the March pack Badlands Orcs, and I highly recommend them. You have a few more days to scoop these up before March ends, and as you can see, there's a ton of variety and they are very high quality sculpts. I really love the modular bits, so you can switch out weapons and body parts to really customize an Orc Warband. And all the models come pre-supported, so they're really easy to print. I also love the look of the upcoming April pack, which features these great looking hill hammer dwarves. Titan Forge models come in 28 millimeter and 32 millimeter scale. And one of the things I love about them is that no matter what the overall theme is, they always seem to come with some cool big bad monsters, as well as some hero miniatures and printable terrain. So you really do get a great variety each month at a great value. Head over to patreon.com slash titanforgeminis and subscribe today. And a huge thank you to Titan Forge for sponsoring this video. All right, now we get into the speed paint. First off, a big thank you to Army Painter for sending this my way. They did send it to me free of charge, so full disclosure on that. Now, Army Painter speed paint is supposed to be a one coat paint that you paint over white primer. And to test this out, I actually painted this Druid miniature from the February Titan Forge pack. I tried one with the recommended Army Painter Primer, which I bought at Ryder's Hobby Shop for $13.50. That's the most I've ever spent on a can of primer. And the other one I primed with White Vallejo Surface Primer. And what I found is that the Army Painter Primer did let that speed paint flow a lot more. You can definitely tell on the cloak of this miniature that the Vallejo Surface Primer just kind of soaked up the paint more than the Army Painter Primer. And while the Army Painter Primer is called Matte White, it definitely does have a little bit more gloss to it than my Vallejo Primer. Now to get started on our Orc, I did spray prime with the Army Painter Primer, and then I undercoated all the things that I would want metallic in Vallejo Game Color Chainmail Silver. There are no metallics in the speed paint line that I know of, so we're actually going to be painting over this metallic paint with speed paint later. Now, in case you don't know, the idea behind speed paint is that it should be a quick one coat paint. It is transparent paint, so you'll be able to see the white primer through a little bit. And what this allows for is the darker pigment to sink into the recesses and the more raised surfaces will remain lighter, which sort of mimics what we often do with highlights in terms of layering on paint. Except in this case, you only need one coat. So naturally for my orc skin, I did use orc skin. It's a green paint. And then I went ahead and did some dark wood on the handles of the weapons. And I used pallid bone on all of the fur around his arms and underneath the chest armor. Now, one of my critiques about Army Painter Speed Paint is the little labels that supposedly show the color do not show anything close to the actual colors as they come out on your miniature. So I found this handy chart from taleofpainters.com and kept it up on one of my monitors at all times when I was planning my colors. Another thing to be aware of with speed paint is that you're gonna have to be pretty careful when you are putting on your colors not to get paint on any adjacent surfaces. So as you can see, I'm doing his waist cloth with this red and I gotta be really careful not to get any on the skin because I can't just go back with more green paint over that skin. You'll still see this red underneath because the paint is transparent. So this was a totally new experience for me. I am not used to being very careful at all. <laughs> now for the red of the waist cloth, I did use a mixture of slaughter red with a little bit of fire giant orange. And now when I'm coating the silver metallic parts, I'm actually using a combination of runic gray with a little bit of hard leather. And I definitely found that a little bit of hard leather goes a long way. It turned out a bit more brown than I was going for. Now for the gold, I actually used zealot yellow and pallid bone mixed together. 
and um, that did give me a little more yellow finish than maybe I should have gone for. I think in hindsight, maybe a little more brown would have left it a more bronze color. And now you see me doing the leather bits and I'm using hardened leather. And I gotta say, hardened leather is probably my favorite speed paint. I really like the way it looks. It's got a great amount of contrast and to me, it just looks like leather. Now, I actually forgot about these little metal plates on his arm fur, and uh, yeah, they didn't turn out so great. I just ended up putting a little bit of gray over them. Now, there were two ways in which I cheated on this miniature and used paints other than speed paint. One was for the eyes. Uh, I just wanted to, after it was all dry, get some little dots of red in there with my normal opaque paint. It's the same paint I used on the other one. I believe it's Vallejo model color flat red. And now you see me mixing a little bit of fire giant orange and dark wood for a nice kind of orangish brown on the base, which actually ended up looking a lot like hardened leather, but oh well. And now the second place I cheated on the teeth, <laughs> just a little bit of uh, off-white opaque paint, just to kind of pick out those teeth, any parts that I had gotten a little bit of red on. Once again, you gotta finish your base, make it crisp and clean, and just give it that finishing touch. All in all, I had a goal of completing this miniature in 30 minutes. I thought maybe I can even push and do 20 minutes. No, it was not that. It was 45 minutes all said and done. So it's still half the time of my other miniature, and I think the results are pretty good. It pretty much turned out as expected here. There were definitely a few more sloppy spots where I got paint in areas where I didn't want it. You can see areas like this and this. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with the results, and I think for a 45 minute paint job, it's gonna be hard to beat. In addition to a few more sloppy spots than my first miniature, I also did have to cut some corners to try to get it done more quickly. You notice that the shoulder armor doesn't have any leather on it here. I just did it all in the metal color. You have a lot less detail on the fur bracers around his arms. I did not paint the fingernails or toenails, though I think they look pretty good as is. And on larger flat surfaces like the orc skin, I do think the speed paint has a little bit of a splotchy finish. But overall, I enjoyed using Army Painter's speed paint. I think that it's, it's a bit of a different skill and I'm not really sure what role it's gonna play in my painting future or how much I'll use it. I think that remains to be seen. Certainly if you're trying to paint a whole army and you don't have much time, I think this would be really useful. And honestly, even if you're only painting one miniature for the upcoming D&D game on Friday night, I can see this being really useful when you have limited prep time and you really wanna get a miniature painting and on the table for your players. So I would love to hear what you think as well. So please leave your comments down below. And if you wanna pick up some speed paints or check out any of my other miniature painting supplies, I will put links down in the video description and many of those are affiliate links, which means a small percentage goes towards supporting the channel at no extra cost to you. Lastly, I do want to thank the WASD20 patrons. Patrons are people who support the channel on a monthly basis. They are the lifeblood of the channel, and they also get access to some pretty cool rewards. Things like weekly live streams with me and behind the scenes updates. So go check it out over at patreon.com slash WASD20. Thanks patrons, and thank you all for watching this one. Take care everybody. You'll see me again very soon.